Hi there, and welcome to the great collaborative project adventure. My name's Rob Nelson, and for the last 25 years, I have been a thinker about and a practitioner of collaborative project-based learning and collaborative assessment. Now, a little bit about my background. I was 37 years old. I'd been a manager in industry. I had a seven-figure budget I was responsible for, a team that I was responsible for leading. And I decided to go back to school because I didn't know what good managers and good leaders were supposed to do, but I knew it wasn't what was being done to me. So I figured I had to go out and to learn how to do it properly. In 1998, I was enrolled at what was then the Central Institute of Technology in Upper Hutt, New Zealand, completing a New Zealand Diploma in Business Level 6, at the same time as I was also completing my undergraduate degree majoring in business psychology extramurally through Massey University. 1998 was also the year where I encountered the course 236 Applied Management. Now this was something which was completely different to every other course that I'd taken before. Why? Because for the whole trimester, the whole 17 weeks, we had to get ourselves into teams, we had to scope a project, we had to run the teams to deliver the project, and we had to reflect at the end on what we thought we'd learned. Not necessarily the hard skills, perhaps it was more important to reflect on the soft skills. So here I was, as I say, 37 years old, experienced manager from industry, and suddenly I was being expected to do things that I hadn't been allowed to do in my role as a manager in industry. I'd been allowed to, um, to interview for people who were coming into my specialist area within the business, but not other areas of the business. I'd never been allowed to make the final hiring decisions, however. That had always been a recommendation that was made to head office, which often involved a second interview for the applicant. I was responsible for achieving some budget figures, but I had no input into how those were set. And suddenly, thrust into a room full of people who were mostly strangers to me, I had to be part of putting a team together, so potentially choosing people, interviewing people, the ones who I felt that I could work with successfully for the next 17 weeks, and making decisions to either join with them or not join with them. Making decisions about how we were going to run the team. So what was it that we set for ourselves as targets on how we were going to behave? So not just what we were going to deliver in terms of what we we're promising to the project sponsor, but how we were going to operate ourselves as a collaborative collective I remember one of the things that we set, um, that was Katie, Cherie, David and myself, as an objective for our project team, was that we would finish the 17 weeks with the same team that we started with. And why did we set that as an objective? Because we looked around at the way the other teams were going through the formation process and figuring out how they were going to operate, and it was fairly obvious that they weren't doing well in the problem-solving stakes. They weren't doing well in the communication stakes, which is why they weren't doing well in the problem-solving. So we set ourselves a very clear target that we would finish with the same team that we started with, and we would do a good job. At the end of it, I have to say, we were probably one of the few teams that did finish in the same configuration that we started with, even though we spent quite a bit of time trying to exit one of the members from the team because we weren't happy with the way that they were performing. They probably weren't happy with the way that we were performing. And that's something that I'll talk about in future vlogs as well. So, a couple of years after I'd been a learner on that course, I ended up taking over the running of it. 
Now, one of the things I've always wondered, nobody ever said anything, was whether my reflective at the end of the course had anything to do with that. Because we had, about, from memory, three to four pages to look back on all the lessons that we thought we've learned over the 17 weeks of not only doing the project, but also running a team. We evaluated not only our own performance, but there was also a component where we evaluated the performance of the other people in the team. And that's something that, again, I'm going to go on to talk about in future vlogs. It was about three to four pages were expected. I remember mine was something over 20 pages because I basically sat there and I had redesigned the entire experience from the day people came in, all the things they would do along the journey, and a little bit about where they would go when they'd finished. A couple of years after I'd taken the course as a learner, Tim, our tutor, um, moved to another country and he recommended that I take over the course. So it was almost like what I'd written a couple of years earlier was now going to be the template for what I would do when I ran the course myself. So I've got a lot of experience in collaborative learning, collaborative assessment. I've seen and been part of some really awesome things happening. I've seen and been part of some really not so awesome things happening. And I've got a lot of things that I want to share with you, um, particularly those of you who are either interested in the possibility of collaborative learning for the courses that you're facilitating, or for those of you who are already facilitating collaborative courses and are looking for suggestions as to how can you do this better. So that's what I'm going to be covering in these vlog sessions. And the next one, which I'm hoping that you'll join me for, we're going to be dealing with questions that I've been asked over the years. The next one, the question will be, I'm working with groups in my marketing class, but I'm worried that this whole group-based thing is going to disadvantage vulnerable learners. Robbie, can you help with that? So I hope you'll join me for that one, and I'll see you in another couple of days, and we'll work our way through some of the suggestions I've got for how collaborative learning actually isn't disadvantaging vulnerable learners. In fact, it can be one of the best things that's ever happened for them. So look forward to seeing you in the next vlog. Until then, stay safe, be well.